Hello again, YouTube. Lightbringer here, giving you a, I guess, a review on um, Halo Wars 2. If you reserved it, you get it, M-O-T-D, you get it a couple of days early. So I did as kind of a late Valentine's Day present for me and my wife. So we played through the story uh, this weekend. And I like the story. I do. It's very deep. It's very engaging. It adds some new elements to the game. And oh my gosh, it's hard. Uh, we played on normal. Because we haven't played Halo Wars 1 in, in over a year. So we were like, oh, okay. That's, let's, let's do this. Um, and I was looking forward to a couple of these new modes and new generals and the story itself. So I figured, pfft. I'm gonna get it anyway. I might as well get it, get some free stuff out of it with like pre order bonus. And this way I get the updated, not updated, the upgraded version of Halo Wars 1 eventually when they send me my email notification and I'll download that for me and her. Uh, first, I guess I'll review the Blitz mode, which is actually pretty cool. If you like real-time strategy games, or you don't, but you like card games where, like, you play units and stuff happens like that, then that's what this is. Um, bring friends along, survive alone. I only really need to do the one. Like, one match, just to say I did. And we'll use... Um, for those of you who have played one recently professor anders they totally changed what she looks like when you first see her in game you're like who the heck is this chick like where's anders and then it tells you she's anders and you're like -uh. but apparently this is anders again and okay um i've built my own deck with all the cards you can get from this game um go through the story first because doing each level of the story will give you a pack of cards. I had like 20 packs of cards by the time I got to the end of the game. Some Something a little over that, I think. Um, I'm only so-so at it because I've only played it like the once. The wife is wanting to play with and I'm like, cool. But, um, it, it, I'm not a big fan of multiplayering against other people. Like, I see it as, if I want to compete with other people, there's sports events, there's tournaments, there's... Here, I want to team up with a guy and beat up a really hard AI opponent. That way I feel like I beat somebody Good smart. To here. I'm ready to but back not, you up. like, Inbound. potentially cheap. <laughs> and I know, like, when you win, you're like, yeah, I feel all good yeah, about winning, speed. but... Some of this, like, I don't like RTSs against people. Because it it's painful, honestly. I'm going to start with 200. Well, that's great. Because why the heck is it? Yeah. All right, let's go get, um, waves. There are waves now? Oh, right, of course there are waves. Derp. I think I was supposed to be capturing this the whole time. And I am... Red team, I guess? Okay, so I'm red now. First time I played, I was blue. So... Whoa, his little blue guys are moving quick, ain't they? Um, I kind of like this. You don't have to build units per se. All units. Where are my units? There. Oh, those guys just took me from me. Um, I don't exactly know what I'm waiting All for units. on this. Um, the way it works is you get your cards. If you put your cards in here... In like your little base thing, you'll get well they'll they'll just work like they should. 
wave three, whatever. But this is pretty much how it works. You get points, you go blow stuff up, you get a couple more points. Uh, if your people die, you get some points back for them. I mean, there's not as much strategy, I feel, in this, because you don't have to worry about who's doing what, or... Oh my gosh, they're attacking over there, do I need to attack here? I mean, yes, I have like three bases to deal with and worry about, but... Other than that, I, I really don't need to care, honestly. I feel like if I wait long enough, I'll be able to... Okay, is it just the waves of progressively easier people, and once I hit a certain score... We have enemy forces Because I'm looking there at the top, and it's got like a percentage keeps changing. But I don't know what the percentage is for. I should probably... Ooh, that's a lot of guys. That is a perfect time to show you guys the new guy. For those of us who hated Scarab, or yeah, Scarabs. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, go over here, buddy. Murder. Kill Apocalypse. Heck yeah! Glad I'm recording. <sighs> okay. So apparently I was rambling and even my computer n noticed so it froze before I could record like a 20 minute video of just me rambling about how terrible I am at Blitz. Um, my biggest beef with that game is for you to get new cards to be able to build your decks and do all that, you need to complete challenges, like weekly and daily challenges are in this game, but they only work in the multiplayer version of the game. Um, I don't know if you and when you rank up because like a lot of the Call of Duty and Modern Warfare games you get um like ranks and with every rank you get a new blitz pack which that's all well and good I guess but if you're playing solo or you don't have an internet connection or you just you know don't want to have to play against other people like that solo thing I did, I finally went through it, didn't get any cards, didn't get any experience, and since it's an endless wave thing, you can't technically win. So we were like, no cards, which means I can't really play Blitz too awful much unless I want to go PvP. I mean, there are a couple of modes that let you PvE with other players, like via online, so those might give you rank ups and cards or whatnot. So if any of you guys know what exactly will let you rank up that doesn't involve you having to fight against uh, normal human beings, because I don't really see a point to doing that on a lot of games. And this game, it really feels like that was how they added to it. Um, but me and my wife, we usually would do the AI deathmatch. Like us two versus like three AI players. And we really liked Anders because every leader had a passive ability that was human. And hers was all of her stuff researched faster and is cheaper, and that's great. But the way this game is working, I think they tweaked how that works. But I think, like, these guys normally cost 150. This normally costs 400. She does not buy things we'll some cheaper like she used to. Supplies. Now, she only does it with this. She unlocks her passive ability before anyone else. Reduced cost. So, I buy that. And now, my army dudes still cost the freaking same. So, I don't, I don't get it. It's passive. Upgrades now cost less. And research quicker. So, maybe this? But this is an upgrade. And it doesn't cost less or research quicker. Yeah, it still cost me 400. So, I'm very confused about that. Um, other oh, than that, right. for the most part, everything's really the same. Get those resources, troops! Um, but because of that, I don't think the leaders will matter so much as they used to. Because, like, before, 
I would go with Anders every single Our time because research. being able to research things faster and cheaper really helps your game economy. Um, I'm not playing this seriously. Um, they have also split your supplies and power into two separate things that grow. Um, if you played Halo Wars 1, you used to be able to build like two or three generators on the human side or one temple on the enemy side. And from then on, you would be able to pretty much build any kind of tech, research anything you wanted. And that was all well and good. Um, now, generators are like supply pads. You get power or you get tech. Which I kind of don't like that quite as much. Because... Like, here, there are things I can... Well, not not yet. But, like, there are things you could buy with just money, but if you want to upgrade them, they cost tech. And that's all fine. But some of the things, if you have, like, 50,000 supplies, but only, like, 50 tech, you can't buy anything. And that really hurts you. And then each of these costs supplies and tech to not upgrade, but to use. Leader point earned. Ooh. And leader points will let you unlock more of these. Okay. Infantry, vehicle, and aircraft. Supply pad upgrade complete. It could be the little marine guy doesn't count. I know in the original game, most of the things that you could do from the base were like the warthog. Which didn't really count as a vehicle for some of the bonuses, but for others it did. So it, it really makes me wonder if that's how they did it on here. So yeah, um, honestly, I keep oh, nice. noticing things like this, and it makes me really debate if I like this oh, game. I think... Honestly, that I liked Halo 1 more, or Halo Wars 1 more, simply because look at all the things I'll be able to do. And these leader points, you don't start with your leader powers. I mean, they're already locked behind ridiculous costs, but you also have to either play the game long enough, or play the match long enough, or do whatever it is you're doing to... <laughs> wow, that's late. Um... To be able to use these powers. And... Like here, yeah, I started with one leader point. And then I spent another leader point, which is great. Scavenge what you can! But... Like before in Halo Wars 1, you had three or four powers. And that was it. Like, those were your two or three powers, and you could go nuts with those things. Um... For example, Cutter had the Mac Blast, and it had a cooldown, and it cost like 600 resources, so it wasn't the cheapest thing in the world. But once, once you started playing, you could use the Mac Blast, or once you had tech level Generator 1, you could use the Mac Blast. Here, I feel like everybody knows I can do these things. But they don't feel like they can trust me to do these things yet. But then I'm like, why do I need to prove myself to guys who obviously have been following me through a whole other game? Um, yeah, Anders looks different, but she's the same Professor Anders. Okay, so yeah, these guys cost less. Their upgrades don't cost less, but they research faster. And the units themselves... Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then she can build Sentinels, which is kinda okay. Honestly, I think I liked Halo Wars 1 more. Okay, so in... <laughs> Sorry that took so long, guys. So in Halo Wars 1, Every general had their own signature special unit. But, yeah, so she doesn't get her special... Because before, you could upgrade hornets 
to the Hornets with the uh, couple of guys riding on the sides to one with chaff pods that would release counter-air missiles. And then you could upgrade it to the Hawk, which was a half-jet chopper Hornet-looking thing that fired laser beams instead of machine guns and rockets. And the laser beams were flipping awesome. But here, <coughs> all I've got is my Hornet. So she doesn't really get her, her signature unit from Halo Wars 1. Which, I get it, they want to like make their own game. Because Bungie made the first one, 343 made this one. And this one feels more like it was meant to be a more balanced slash competitive uh, RTS for like tournaments and PvP. And if you're a big fan of those, then this is great. And it, it really is. But I'm not. I'm not a big fan of PvP. Like, I'll probably play this with my wife, and we won't really notice that big a difference. But the leaders were more unique and powerful feeling in Halo Wars 1. <coughs> Like, the second you saw a general on the screen, you knew what units they were going to mob you with. Um, not many people used Cutter, because Cutter's unique unit was just a giant transport that he could train Marines out of. And Marines being the weakest unit on the human side, nobody liked playing Cutter. So when me and my wife would set it, us two against like three or two enemy AIs and set them to random and they both popped up Cutter. We're like, ha, he's going to just storm us with Marines because that's all Cutter's good for. And Mac blasts, but he doesn't get that now. Now he gets um, Forge's row of missile drop, which is great, but I think they'll both get it this time because Forge is a unique... DLC for free with day one kind of thing. So I haven't... I'm just... I'm a little disappointed. I mean, I get it. I feel like maybe I was expecting more of the same. <laughs> you played a skirmish match. Here, have an achievement. Wow. They give you achievements for everything on this game, though. Like, there are three different tutorials, and if you do all three, that is three achievements. I am not kidding you. Like, the basic one is learn how to move and target things. And there, you got an achievement. Um, but yeah, tell me if any of you guys know how to get card packs or be able to rank up by doing player versus enemy things but with some online friends because i don't mind doing that most pvp things i've done with strategy games like this they're either going to mob rush you or they're going to take their dang time and just like camp there and take forever to kill so it's either a war of attrition or you die in the first three minutes and Neither of those is fun for me. I don't want to be that guy who has to zerg rush to win. But I also don't want to be that guy who has to, like, sit there and pray to God that my turrets last. Because for the most part, I've never seen the turrets in this game to be all that overly powerful. In Halo Wars 1 or 2. Like, if they zerg rush you, your turrets will take out maybe a good half of their guys. But then you die horribly. Now, I will give him credit. Halo Wars 1 had the champions of the um, Covenant. So, like, you would literally have the Prophet of Truth just roll up on your base and start shooting your turrets and stuff. So, he could Zerg rush you with five or ten guys while he was destroying all of your turrets, and then he would just take his sweet time blowing up your base. Here, they don't have that, so the Zerg Rush isn't like 50 grunts and some god-level titan. So I do like that they took that option out for players. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, or you want to see more gameplay, or me and the wife playing some AI dudes, please let me know. Lights out, guys.